Hi, my name is Miriam and this is a presentation of my viewpoint as a student learning about shell and spatial structures through project-based learning at the University of Sheffield. The way the university introduce and teach students about shell and spatial structures is through a project known as the Integrated Design Project. The project brief varies each year, but the basis is students working within groups to redevelop a brownfield site in Sheffield and always includes a long span structure, which lends itself to a shell or spatial structure. For the year I undertook the IDP, the design was for a sports park with an indoor ski slope. There are also many different areas to the project work, such as bridge design, geotechnical work with contamination and drainage. The majority of the IDP is split in two main parts. During part one, we were introduced to these types of structures in presentations, we then went away and developed concepts and developed hand calculations to support the chosen design. During part two, we then um, were put into different groups and you chose the ideas to work up into more detailed design. This is where we then introduced computational methods of design and learning how to design shell and spatial structures within software. There was also a short part three where we then take another team's drawings and attempt to create a model of their design. This has also included a short report looking at if it was in a completely different country and context, what might the project look like? The first phase of teaching included a series of lectures on different topics, including an overview of shell and spatial structures and how to carry out simple hand calculations. Personally, I love creativity and efficiency in design and have always been intrigued by structures that appear to span so elegantly. So the idea of being given the opportunity to design one in a safe environment where nothing could really go wrong was very exciting. I enjoy thinking and looking into a variety of creative solutions like grid shells, space frames, arches and cable nets. A few examples of my optioneering sketches are shown on the slide here. It was then important to begin determining the advantages and disadvantages of each design. And while precedence and a bit of guidance helped to think about these, it was actually really difficult as a young engineer to really know what was better or worse. For example, looking at constructability, with little on-site experience, it was hard to know what may be easier or more difficult to build. Using a design matrix and lots of discussion, my team eventually settled on the idea of a cable net and arch structure. We then started thinking in more detail as to how the structure would work, thinking about the load paths as shown here, and then developing the basic hand calculations to further understand the feasibility and how the proposed structure was working. It was helpful to be able to break down something which looks relatively complex in simpler methods and apply principles learnt throughout the course. Moving on to part two of the integrated design project, new groups were formed. This meant different groups for, for different structural solutions for the spatial structure. And we then had to come to a decision as a group as to which to take forward to the detailed design. At this point, there was actually an interesting dynamic within our team. There was many members of the team who were actually very hesitant to explore a creative solution which was different to one that they were used to, as they were concerned about it being too big a risk, not being able to design it, or to achieve the marks that they wanted. They could have quite easily outvoted a creative design. However, thankfully, the more nervous members were persuaded and reassured of the creative license and how this will be rewarded in this instance. And decided, we then decided between a grid shell option and a cable net. I think the encouraged creativity is an area that is really important to reinforce in students. Otherwise, this group work teaching technique may mean that students who want to explore these forms cannot as they're outvoted. Before the project, I personally had no experience of working with structural design software. The software taught by the university was Oasis GSA. Tutorials provided the opportunity to learn and ask questions as you developed your model. Designing a cable net meant that the technique of form finding was required to find the shape of the net. And it was great to be able to design such an interesting form and realise some of the powers of this kind of software as a student. The approach was mainly learn by having a go, although this naturally meant that problems were encountered along the way. For example, I had assumed that the greater the number of nodes and elements in the structure, the better, as this would give me a more accurate result. 
However, in fact, the opposite was true as the differential stiffness meant the stro software struggled to converge during an iterative or non-linear analysis that was required. This is partly why the success of this way of learning was only possible through very regular, highly supportive tutorials from a team committed to understanding and helping each group with their design. So what are the teaching methods? Initially, presentations were given, and I personally found them very useful overviews and introductions to various topics, with shell and spatial structures being one of these. Critical reviews and presentations were regular throughout the project, where different groups would present their progress for tutors to review. This gave you an insight into other groups and the different types of structural forms they had chosen to take forward. Tutorial support was key um, to be a way of learning and developing structures with the, those more experienced than being a student. This was a process of booking in slots with relevant tutors and gave the opportunity to discuss where you're at and get advice and confidence um, to move forward with your solutions, especially when they were complex. Finally, the entirety of the project was carried out within a group. Um, and teamwork being key. This is a great environment to hear and work with different people, although with so many new areas to students presented, such as shell and spatial structures, bridge design, contamination, transport, drainage, sustainability, there was a lot of competition for students' attention, and it was difficult to accommodate different people's desires of what they wanted to work on. Overall, I found that the IDP was a great experience and opportunity to learn about and have a go at designing a creative and efficient shell and spatial structure. Thank you for listening.